Here we go. Speed run this thing. Hello of you. Hello everyone. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I typically take you guys on on my day to see what I do and what I eat now, especially with my new diagnosis diverticulitis and uh, with my previous diagnosis PCOS. And I found that keeping a notebook of stuff helps me. And I know they always say, you know, write it down in a notebook, and, but I've never really took that to heart. But now that I'm in this situation, I have been putting things down on notebooks and it actually helps a ton. Anyways, this particular notebook, because I have several notebooks with other things, but this particular notebook is for my diet plans, what I'm going to eat and what I plan to eat for the week and the next weeks. And it has what I've already eaten before. So I have it all written written down. I have my grocery list written down and it actually helps me keep on track of everything. And it doesn't like, it's really nice too. like, you get to pre-plan your foods. Like Monday, you're going to eat fish. Tuesday, you're going to eat like a chicken breast. Wednesday, uh, spaghetti, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's nice to be able to plan that all ahead of time. That way, that way, when the day comes, you're not just there sitting. Mm, what do I have in my fridge? What can I eat today? What should I cook? It's already planned out for you. You already plan it out for yourself and you're just set to go. And you should, what, what I tend to do is tend to go to the grocery store on Mondays or Sunday nights, but typically Monday mornings, afternoon, after I eat breakfast and I get all the groceries. So I'm set for the rest of the week and I make sure I only get enough groceries for that week in my meal plans. I don't overbuy and I don't, I don't buy things that is, that is unnecessary and not on my, on my list. So having a list helps me to keep all that in check. And let me show you. The front pages have been all the grocery lists I made before I got diagnosed with diverticulitis. Um, what is... <laughs> like tri-tip. I made chile rellenos, birria taco, ceviche, tamales. Um... A lot of beef in there as well and pork, loaded nachos and whatnot. And then I got diagnosed. And unfortunately with that, you have to change your diet. You can't eat everything you used to eat. At least I can't eat everything I used to eat. And I, um, if you knew me before, I was such a big food person. I loved food. I loved trying a ton of food. And um, Unfortunately, with that, it came with a lot of consequences, and I did end up gaining a ton of weight, and, uh, and I did end up putting myself in an, 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 an unhealthy situation. But anyways, now that I am diagnosed with diverticulitis, I have made up my meal plans, especially since my mom isn't here to be able to help me out with figuring out food. She was helping me out in the first two weeks she was here, but then after that, I had to figure that all on my own. So this is an example. This is week one when I figured it out. I had Monday to Sunday and I had a grocery list. See, I like this um, system where it's like what you're going to eat on one page and then the next page you can see your grocery list because while you figure out, I go day by day. And then if I don't have, for example, my breakfast on Monday was oatmeal and I know I'm running really low on oatmeal I put it here oatmeal and then I'll go here Tuesday I have eggs so I didn't have to put eggs um, fish I didn't have fish so I had to put fish down there and then I'll just go down that way I made sure I had every ingredient I needed to for every meal that way I know that I get to be able to accomplish every single meal and the weeks the checks are as you go basically <laughs> I was I as I went um, week two 
week three. And I also found like here in Grossman, like we too had a most example of it. Um, in order not to buy too much, if I'm making pasta for one or two days, just one can. Mushrooms for one or two meals, just one pack. And bell peppers, if I'm going to have it for like two or three meals, about three to four bell peppers here. I put. I ended up buying three that day and it worked out. So I, it helps me know for the next time if I'm only going to have uh, bell peppers in a couple meals, just use a few. And I make sure I don't buy too much. So I don't want the food to go bad, especially since I'm only cooking for myself. So I don't have to buy that much food. But anyways, that changed because my sister is joining me on the diet. So I'm going to be cooking extra food. So what I do and what I find works best for me to be able to stick to this diet is that, well, to begin with, I'm not much of a leftover person um, beforehand. I didn't really like to eat leftovers a lot of the times and it happened quite often. I am ashamed to admit it. I would order so much food or I would cook so much food and I'll put it away or I would just throw it away afterwards because I knew I wouldn't eat it or I'll put it away and then it would just sit in the fridge for the longest time and I just have to throw it out because it went bad. So I wasn't much of a take um, leftover eating type of person, but in order to save myself a lot of time and be able to save myself a lot of money as well for grocery shopping, uh, I found a system like a little cheat thing if you will that works best for me with leftovers so what I tend to do or I'll show you here here too you notice for lunch every single day it's gonna have well except for this day because that last night was was um, on Monday night was tuna sandwich so I'm not gonna replicate that the next day but anyways you'll notice for lunch on every single day leftovers 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 L are we leftovers and so what i was doing and i'm doing is i cook enough dinner to for two servings so i'll have dinner for my myself for dinner and then i'll save the rest for lunch the next day uh, but now that my sister's joining me on this diet i need to make four servings oops four four not four <laughs> i need to make four servings so for two servings, one for my sister, one for myself on that night, and then two more servings for the next day for lunch, one for my sister, one for myself. And um, so basically, I just need to double everything, but it won't be all that much. It's only for two people anyways. And um, what I find works for me is that the leftovers, if I eat them for lunch, it's fine because I'm not ending my day. I'm not ending the day eating the same flavors I have since the night before. So it doesn't tire me out. It doesn't, um, I don't get over the food that quickly. I eat it, I eat my new breakfast because I never make enough food breakfast to last the next day. I only ever cook typically just eggs and toast or oatmeal or pancakes that I can pre-make a ton of pancakes and then freeze and eat about two regular pancakes um, whenever I put it down in my mornings. And it's actually helpful, like a tip there. You can pre-make your pancakes, lightly cook them, and then freeze them. So next time you eat it, they're ready to set and go, and you just re-toast them on the stove or, you know, the microwave, whatever you want, and, and they still taste really good, no joke. Anyways, going back to the leftovers i find that if i eat leftovers for lunch yeah it's the same flavor as last night but because you had a new flavor for breakfast and new food for dinner you're gonna have later on i don't mind eating leftovers for lunch i actually enjoy it now um if that makes any sense so a lot of the times i have a good breakfast i'll have a pretty small lunch because typically when i when i say i have two servings it's more like one and a half servings i make because for dinner i want to make sure i eat a good portion i will make sure because if i eat a small portion and, and it only like it's not big enough i get hungry before i go to sleep and i never no one likes going to sleep hungry it's just not comfortable but i find that if i eat a small lunch like half a serving or maybe a little bit more than half a serving for lunch which is di last night's leftover dinners by dinner i eat a good portion dinner that i'm i can be for the rest of the day or the night i can be the rest of the night just good 
I'm good. I don't have to eat anymore. Um, and because I need to eat dinner early, I'm getting into the habit of eating di- dinner very early rather than very late. Because I used to eat dinner very, very late, and occasionally I'll eat it like at two in the morning and then go to sleep right away. And that's not that's not good, and that's not healthy. So I'm getting in the habit of eating at certain times in the mornings. I eat the latest 10:30. For lunch, I'll eat around 12.31 p.m. And for dinner, I'll eat around anywhere between 6.30 to 7.30. Eight the latest, depending on what type of food or, or if any I had anything to do that day and I couldn't do it earlier. But um, that's a trick that I find works for me. And I'm going to see if it works with my sister. But that's a tip I wanted to put out there that if you're kind of eh about leftovers, that's one thing you can do. You can make dinner one and a half portions to two portions. I typically make one and a half because I like to eat a smaller, lighter lunch because I ha- I eat snacks in between. Like I have a chocolate pudding, I have a jello cup, I have like a fruit cup or like a yogurt I eat. Uh, so I'll eat that in between meals. So that's why I'm okay eating a very light lunch because I'll eat those snacks in between um, meals. So by dinner time, I have just a regular portioned meal. Of course, I'm not going to overstuff my plate and I'm not going to overstuff myself either, but it's a good portion where I can last and not eat snacks after dinner. I don't have to eat snacks. Occasionally, I'll treat myself and eat a small bowl of ice cream, but it's fine. You want to know why? Because even though I'm eating all these snacks, I'm still losing weight. <laughs> but you just have to stick to your meal plans. Your meal diet is is what it is. And I find that helps me. So, yeah, dinners, any leftover for dinner, you eat it for lunch the next day. Because then for dinner, you have new flavors in your palate. You have new foods and you're not getting over or tired of the food you're eating. So, for example, let's go... Um, I'm going to go with last week because it's a little bit more like it's been done. Okay. So last week I ended up for on Monday for lunch. I made chicken with brown rice. Right. I made about one and a half servings and then I put the rest away. And for lunch, I ate the chicken and brown rice. But then for dinner, I made kimbap, which is like a Korean rice roll. And then whatever was left over, I ate that for lunch the next day. But then for dinner, I ended the night with fish, mashed potatoes, and veggies. And then whatever was left over, I ate it for lunch the next day. And the next day, I ate turkey, green, what was it I put? Green beans and mashed potatoes. And then again, put that away um ate that for lunch the next day but then i ended the night with chicken thighs and rice and then again the same thing you know etc like eat that for saturday lunch but that dinner i ate clam chowder to be honest the clam chowder was a new meal a new dish to add into my system um i guess the brand i got wasn't even good because i really couldn't eat it all that much i mean i, I ate it but and then they didn't make me sick. So I know I can stomach clam chowder. I know my stomach can do clam chowder. But I just need to find a better brand. Because the one I got was... Mm. Um, but anyways, I ate clam chowder. The next day, I l- ate the rest for leftovers. And then for dinner, I ate fish and veggies. So that's what I mean by you don't end the night with the same food you ate the night before. And then that re- that causes the feeling of repetition And then you just don't want to eat your leftovers and it makes it hard to even follow the diet. So I find that that helps me quite a lot. Um, I have week five um, set already. And you'll notice it's colorful. I like being colorful, especially since this isn't an easy process to go through. I like to have something that keeps my mind off of things. Um, Obviously... The reality is there. Yes, it is. But why not make it a little bit fun here and there, you know? So I have Monday to Sunday. This is going to be week five. And since it's helping me, I actually find that I continue it. I do continue it. A lot of people tend to start something and they find it doesn't help, which is fine. You need to find things that help and and work with you. But I found that this 
works with me and it also keeps me from over buying things at the grocery store because before before i was on this meal plan and before i got diagnosed and never go to the grocery store yeah i had things in mind okay i need food i'm gonna get um steak i'm gonna get turkey i'm gonna get chicken but then i wouldn't know when i'd make it and i wouldn't know my actual meal plan and sometimes i would have food that would go bad and sometimes when I was at the grocery store, I'd buy more than what I really should or what I went in there for. Like I'd see a, a box of cupcakes, you know, a box of like of donuts or cookies or, you know, pastries. And I'll be like, okay, throw that into my cart. And then I end up spending so much money on unnecessary food and unnecessary items. Um, so, excuse me. So this has helped me a lot a lot a lot saving money and um unfortunately due to my pcos i am gluten free and dairy free and i found that being gluten free with diverticulitis is actually also a very good thing so i've been eating a lot of gluten free foods like with when i make pastas i make sure it's gluten free noodles um, with bread, I tend to get, you know, I mean, with bread is a little bit complicated. There's not, um, I can't get bread with like little nuts in them or like little oats. It needs to be where soft where those things can't, you can't swallow those because then it get it can get stuck in your pockets, your, your abscess pockets and your colon. So... With bread, you just need to find gluten-free bread and that don't have any of those things in there. And then um, with dairy, I don't ha I don't eat any cheese. I can't eat cheese. I, I eat dairy-free cheese, which is like vegan cheese. I mean, it's all plant-based, which is good, which is okay. I get that type of cheese. For milk, I get lactate cheese. Um, <laughs> For milk, I get dairy-free um, dairy milk. So I still improvise. So when there's a dish that requires cheese or milk, I use those instead of the regular, you know, regular dairy to cheese and milk. But when I cook for my family, like my sister on her birthday, I used regular heavy whipping cream. I just didn't eat any of the foods I made her. I made her a flatbread buffalo style chicken. Right now with diverticulitis, and the flare-ups we have in the moment, they say it's recommend. It's recommended to stay away from spicy food. So I didn't eat any of that. I didn't eat anything I made for her on her birthday. I didn't even eat the cake because I, I really shouldn't be eating all that. So I had my own meals. So when I made her all her foods on her birthday party, I also made myself chicken on the side so I can eat that um, along with them. So I wouldn't be like sometimes they tell me they feel bad because they eat their foods and i'm there eating like my my um, my fish or my my plate full of vegetables and i'm just like don't don't feel bad it's not like they're the ones who put this disease in me but they still can't help it so at the same time i just try to like when i make them food or when they have their own foods i'll make myself the my foods and we'll eat it around the same time so um i mean Maybe it's a good thing my sister sees me eat my food because now she wants to join me and she wants to go on this journey with me too because she doesn't have diverticulitis. She wasn't diagnosed with diverticulitis, but she does want to become a healthier version of herself and she's noticed just how much I've, I've lost with this diet and, and um, with this lifestyle I'm living now. So she wants to join me so not only so that I can i won't feel alone in it but that she can also become healthy herself as well so i just want to show you guys that my notebook i have several notebooks for other things i have another one for um i write down what i have tried out so far like yogurt milk dairy-free cheese beans rice chicken turkey um what else other things fish and i'll put a check mark if check mark if it's good and i'll put an x if it's bad i've already experienced something that isn't good which is um this is dairy-free yogurt i used to eat a lot even before i got diagnosed um with diverticulitis it was a dairy-free yogurt i used to eat a lot 
um, by Silk, I believe. Oh, so good. So good, vanilla bean flavored. I ate that the other day and it made me feel really sick. Um, and it had a weird flavor to it too. So it made me feel like maybe the yogurt went bad, but I checked the expiration date and it was still good for like another month. So I don't know what happened there, but, um, uh, it didn't go, it didn't sit well with me. So now I know that that yogurt, at least that brand, I'm not allowed to eat. Um, I might try it in a couple months time to see if it was the yogurt. Um, but as of now, and as far as I know, it was that yogurt that made me feel the way I did. And I know that's one thing I should avoid. Um, what else? That was that. Yeah, that's one notebook. And I have another notebook that keeps track of my medical stuff. So, um, when I never, whenever I need a shower, I need to drain my bag with the fluids and I need to measure it first before I dump it out. And I write down how much it was in there, how much I drained out. I'll write down anything that my concerns throughout anything I'll feel like the other day I had some like pain. So I wrote down there like on this day I had pain that lasted so so long and whatnot. And then I'll also write down any upcoming doctor's appointments and whatnot. So it helps me keep on track of everything. And then I have this blackboard. This blackboard is more for like urgent stuff. So right here, my, oh, my finger, I'm just, <laughs> this white paper, it's just a reminder that I have another doctor's checkup in a, like two and a half months from now, which is why it's up there. So it gives me a reminder. Um, and then it's just more like when I should be flushing, like the times I should be flushing my, my line. Um, I put down here an updates on my weight. So it, I, I weigh myself on the daily and I write down there, my, well, almost on the daily. Now that I've reached below 179, um, now that I've reached 179, I don't weigh myself on the daily anymore. It's just once every other day. So I have my recent weigh-in, which was on the 16th. What day is it today? Honestly, I forgot the day today. Um, but I weighed myself on the 16th, and, and then when I weighed myself... I was 179.1. Um, I'm going to weigh myself tomorrow to see where I'm at. But because I'm losing less and less weight now. Because before I, when everything started, I lost a pound a day. Um, and then it went down to like point, like 7 pounds and then to point 0.4 pounds. And now it's just less, which is good. I'm not drastically losing weight anymore and it's... Um, not worrying me as much, but I am still losing weight, especially because I'm keeping up this diet and I go on daily walks. Um, in case you forgot, I did start of a weight of 215, 215 pounds. And right now I'm at 171, 179, sorry, 179.1. And my goal at the moment is to be at the 160s, but, um, that's my goal, but eventually I want to go back to 150 that's my that's what I should weigh medically speaking I am five feet and five inches and I should be weighing 150 pounds so that will be my ultimate goal but now that I've reached the 170s my next goal is 160 uh so yeah there you have it I'll make another video updating my board and um, I just want to talk about what I do to help me keep on track with my diet any other questions, obviously feel free to leave it in the comments. Again, this is all still very new to me, so I'll try to answer as much as I possibly can. Um, if not, I'll, I'll tell you as it happens. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And maybe even though you guys don't have diverticulitis, maybe it'll help you guys with start your own diets. All right, bye.